Good morning. Today's class is on thyroid hormones and anti-thyroid drugs, part 1. By the end of this class, you should be able to describe the synthesis, storage and release of thyroid hormones, especially T3 and T4. You should be able to describe what are the physiological actions or functions of the thyroid hormones and what happens when there is a deficiency of thyroid hormones in adults and children and how it is treated. The first part of today's lecture is more of a recapitulation or revision of what we have learned in physiology. So the principal thyroid hormones are triiodothyronine, tetrahydrothyronine and calcitonin. We will be concentrating on T3 and T4. So, the basic function of the thyroid hormones, when we say thyroid hormones, we are referring to T3 and T4, is to stimulate oxygen consumption in most of the cells and to help regulate lipid and carbohydrate metabolism. Thyroid hormones are necessary for normal growth and maturation of all tissues, including the nervous tissue. So, deficiency of thyroid hormone results in hypothyroidism. And when there is an excess, the condition is hyperthyroidism. Thyroid function is controlled by thyroid stimulating hormone, which is released from the anterior pituitary and is under feedback control of the thyroid hormones. So, the steps in the synthesis, storage, and release of thyroid hormone includes first is uptake of iodine into the thyroid gland with the dependence of the sodium iodine symphoter that is also called the iodine pump which is an energy dependent or ATP dependent pump. Once the iodine is taken up into the thyroid cells, there is oxidation and iodination of iodide to iodine. The key enzyme here is the peroxidase. Then there is coupling of iodine to tyrosine with the residues to form monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. Combination of two molecules of diiodotyrosine will form T4 and coupling of one monoiodotyrosine and one diiodotyrosine will form T3. T4 and T3 which are synthesized and stored in the follicular domain along with thyroglobulin are released by a process of proteolysis. proteolysis. So the E4 in circulation is bound to the proteins and is peripherally converted to T3 at the site of action. Now this peripheral conversion of E4 to T3 is important when we discuss, we will discuss anti-thyroid drugs. We will mention it in detail. So there are large amounts of both T4 and T3 which are bound to plasma proteins and are in equilibrium with free thyroid hormone fractions. Which means at any given time in circulation, T3 and T4 exist in both the free form and bound to plasma proteins. The free thyroid hormones are physiologically active and TSH release or TSH, TSH secretion is controlled by negative feedback mechanism. So this diagram illustrates what is happening in the synthesis, storage and release. So here we have the sodium iodine symphoter which is an ATP dependent process. Then iodination of iodine to iodide. Then there is formation of monoiodotyrosine, diiodotyrosine. Again the key enzyme here is the tyrosine peroxidase stored bound to thyroglobulin in the form of a colloid in the polyky and is released. Deiodinated and converted from 3, 4, 3, 4 to 3, 3, peripherally. Pharmacokinetics of the thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are available as tablets and also for intravenous injection. The thyroid hormones, whether it is T3 or T4, are well absorbed on oral administration, especially better absorbed from an empty stomach. 
metabolized in the liver, excreted to the urine, and also bound to the plasma proteins. So this table gives you the T3, T4 levels, how much is secreted per day, what is the normal blood levels. Please note T4 is expressed in micrograms per 100 ml, whereas T3 is in nanograms per 100 ml. Now, thyroid function tests are used to monitor the treatment T3, T4, TSH. Now, this is a revision of what you have learned in physiology. Thyroid hormones are necessary for the functioning of almost all the cells and tissues in the body. Basic metabolic rate is controlled by thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones have a calorigenic action, that is, they increase body temperature. Thyroid hormones are required for normal growth, for normal development of both the fetal and the child's brain and nervous tissue. Effect on intermediary metabolism, whether it is carbohydrate or fat. Cardiovascular system, deficiency causes arrhythmias, increase also can cause arrhythmias. Respiration, GI motility, central nervous system, skeletal muscle. Remember, excess thyroid hormones can cause skeletal muscle tremors. <coughs> Effect on sleep. If there is excess thyroid hormone, sleep is disturbed. Effect on sodium potassium ATPase. Where is this pump present? In the myocardium. So, any alteration in this can interfere with myocardial contractility leading to congestive heart failure. Increase in thyroid hormones will cause a reduction in body weight because of its effect on increased BMR and calorigenic action. So when does iodine deficiency occur? In those regions where there is deficiency in dietary intake or there are some drugs which can cause iodine deficiency or certain food foods can also cause iodine deficiency. So if there is severe iodine deficiency, the result is the thyroid hormone synthesis is inhibited with or without enlargement of the thyroid gland. This enlargement of thyroid gland is referred to as goiter. Now goiter means thyroid enlargement. It could be either due to deficiency of thyroid hormone or excess of thyroid hormone. So endemic goiter, for example, in the sub-Himalayan regions where the salt, sea salt intake is very, very less. Hypothyroidism, cretinism, decreased fertility, increased infant mortality and mental retardation are some of the outcomes of iodine deficiency. Or inadequate utilization in the presence of goitrogens. What is a goitrogen? Goitrogens are those substances which cause goiter, that is, increase in thyroid gland size. Foods like cassava, tapioca, cabbage, cauliflower, and millets can cause iron deficiency. Sorry, iodine deficiency. These chemicals like thiocyanates and thiourias can also cause iodine deficiency. Hypothyroidism means decreased thyroid hormones. <coughs> If you go back to that table on the normal levels, if the thyroid hormone levels fall below normal, we say there is hypothyroidism. In children, hypothyroidism results in infantile cretinism. So, cretinism is when there is a deficiency of thyroid hormones in children. Manifested clinically by stunted physical and mental growth bone and muscle dystrophy, mental deficiency, respiratory difficulties, persistent jaundice and a very coarse characteristic crying. Hypothyroidism in adults is manifested as myxedema. So in infants and children it is cretinism, in adults it is myxedema. So how do we treat hypothyroidism? Hypothyroidism is treated by giving thyroid hormones from outside, that is called replacement therapy. These are the preparations of the thyroid hormones available. Sodium leothyroxine, 
that is T4 in the form of tablets 25, 50 and 100 microgram tablets. T3 or leothyronin available as 5, 25 and 50 milligram, sorry, microgram tablets. Then we have this combination called leotrix which is a 4 is to 1 combination of T4 and T3 available in these strengths 12.5, 25, 30, 60, 50 and 100 microgram tablets. Thyroid extract no longer used, it is from the crude animal extracts available in different strengths. Now coming to the uses of thyroid hormone. <coughs> For cretinism, that is in a child. As of today, heel prick test for T3, T4 and TSH estimation is routinely done. As soon as the child is born, a blood sample is taken by pricking the heel of the newborn and sending it for estimations of the thyroid hormones. When it is diagnosed, 10 to 15 microgram per day of thyroid hormone is used for the child of age 1 to 6 months. Dose is adjusted based on monitoring the serum thyroxine levels and TSH levels. For adult hypothyroidism, once a diagnosis is based, made, made based on thyroxine and TSH levels, it is usual to start with 50 micrograms per day and increase it by 25 micrograms every 4 to 6 weeks with continuous measuring of TSH and T3 T4. For mixed edema, it is usual to start with 12.5 micrograms per day. And for simple or non-toxic goiter, it is usual to start with 50 micrograms per day and the dose is adjusted or tightened by monitoring the blood levels of T3, T4 and TSH. Mixed edema coma is a medical emergency. That is when there is prolonged and severe deficiency of thyroid hormone. This can be a 3 mark or a 5 mark test. So, levothyroxine is given intravenously as a loading dose, 200 to 300 micrograms, followed by 100 micrograms intravenous after 24 hours. Along with this, because it is a stressful situation, 100 milligrams of hydrocortisone is given intravenous, 8 hourly, with correction of hypoglycemia and electrolyte imbalance. The patient is kept warm because the BMR would have come down very, very severely. Now, once the patient regains consciousness, patient is started on oral thyroid hormones. So, from this <coughs> part of the thyroid hormones, the possible questions are treatment of myxedema coma. That is the theory question which can possibly be asked. And usually in the viva table, you will be asked about Name the thyroid hormones, which is the active form. Name two drugs which inhibit the peripheral con conversion of T4 to T3. Thank you.